So let's hear it. Why Iowa? I hunted in, I leased ground and hunted Iowa for many years and after hunting it for, for enough years I realized I wanted to someday own ground in Iowa and live in Iowa. Southern Iowa, October 1st, opening day for the big boys. And who's up to bat? Matt. Matt's up to bat. We're doing a, a hanging hunt. More of a more of a big satin hunt. I don't know if that counts. I don't generally go put a blind in the field and hunt it day one. But that's generally because deer on point, that's halfway through the season, going into gun season, late season, where season just opened. So the deer are not on point. The deer they're not spooky, they're not skittish, they're moving in daylight. Um, we got a we got a spot back here that's very secluded and the landowner said he's been watching like a handful of big bucks back here so I don't know what's going on back here uh, we don't have a lot of cameras so we're shooting from the hip As Matt rode the tractor back in there with me and uh, he's in the blind brought the tractor out had the quiet cat sitting here now I'm gonna buzz back on the quiet cat it's kind of a Pretty slick setup we got getting in here right now. Hopefully it works out. Here. It's a little warm in here. October 4th, and we're here on my South Central Iowa farm, Nathan and I, uh, on a plot we call a lake plot. It's usually pretty productive, and uh, it's war kind of warm tonight, but this is the uh, tail end of a cold front that just moved through, so hopefully another good night of seeing some mature bucks and seeing it. the one we want steps out. Matt and I are starting off the 2020 season. He's got a couple good deer on camera. Number one, Waylon. But number two is the management eight from last year. Now he's the big nine. So we're going into this season. Waylon's MIA. So we're going after the big nine. Well, it's a nice hot day in Southern Iowa. 80 degrees. I'm dying. Let's get the AC on. Got the AC cranking. Oh, yeah. Going in, uh, we got this buck called Triple Beam. 
he is uh, a cool deer and uh, he gets mad excited so that's the deer we're gonna go in here and uh, hopefully he uh, comes to the yard walking back to the buggy I got in I hung the stand and uh, wasn't feeling it. wind swirling wasn't loving it my gut told me we needed to bail so we're bailing going back to the, our what we call the lake food plot we're heading out going after this bully deer and we get in this stand and I see a dead rabbit at the bottom of the tree and I look at Matt and I said no way bad juju we're not hunting this tree and I said we're going up to the to the lake plot uh, it's on top of a ridge. It's on greens. I said he's been showing up there too. Let's go to the lake plot and get in that tree. I'm not getting in this one. We know these deer are moving early. Uh, we're hoping we can get our eyes on them. Stop. Hammer, dude. <laughs> He's a freaking hammer. That was exciting. <laughs> dude, how long did it take for him to get to us? It was literally an hour to, to go 50 yards. I thought he was far enough in front of me, passing me to where I could draw safely. I drew my bow and that's when things went a little bit hectic because when I drew, I must have been against the tree and I had to sit real weird way out on the seat and I just, I couldn't get, I couldn't get my form and I knew it wasn't right. So I had to relax get away from the tree a little bit more, get my form and stop them all in a matter of seconds. And the shot felt good, you know, I, a little bit higher than I wanted and a little bit forward than I wanted. Uh, 43 yards is what it ended up being. Um, the footage looked pretty good though. It looks like it, I tucked it right behind his shoulder. Looked like it went in and popped back out a little bit. Um, so we're ho hopefully kill, kill, you know, have a dead deer. Now Nathan and I are gonna go recover this big this big bugger, hopefully, and everything goes right. Uh, we'll find a big old buck down in the ditch here. And tonight he fed up through through these beans and stuff. Uh, he went down by the lake a couple times, um, just kind of milled around. And... Quite a bit, quite a bit right there. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. <laughs> He's getting confused. I know he wasn't going far. Oh, look at that animal. Dude, look how big his body is. Oh, my goodness. He's a truck. Oh, my goodness. He's a truck. He is an absolute giant. I think that, you know, uh, I shot a really large buck up in Alberta years ago, a lar large body. And, it, and the funny thing is, that buck that I shot in Alberta, I, we called him Sling Blade because one side was just a huge 27 inch blade with a huge double brow tines, but just one big single palmated 27 inch blade from the base. And uh, 
he was the he was the largest bodied deer and I'd say this thing is probably close to the same if not bigger just a beautiful Iowa buck so I'm I'm getting in the land business uh, real estate but I'm also doing land management on the side and Matt was one of the first guys to call me you know we're we're trying to make this farm better we're trying to get food in that was before he come a resident he wasn't here all the time so he needed somebody here looking after his farm putting the food plots in and and obviously i was more than happy to get in here and, and turn this place into something special really sweet spot we set the stage for this deer we named wayland he's a big deer and uh we have not had a daylight picture of him yet so we're out there, we get these pictures of this buck, and I sent him to you, and we're, like I'm jacked, and you're, you're still processing this deer. I know he's special, and you're trying to figure it out, but first things first, we had to come up with a name. So I remember like, Matt, what are we naming this deer? Like this is our first deer we're gonna name. Uh, hit list bucks after old country singers. Uh, so I, we named him Waylon. After we named the deer, we started, uh, instantly we started uh, hanging a bunch of cell cams uh, to try to figure out to pattern this buck, to pattern Waylon, uh, and trying to figure out where we we're going to set up lines, where his movements were, where we we're going to set up tree stands, how we we're going to access, you know, how we we're going to work the wind, uh, and and just exactly where his home turf was and where we needed to be to be able to kill him. Phone dinged, we got that picture, November 4th. It was like 12.30 p.m. Matt looks at me, says it's wailing daylight. He's moving. So we look at each other, we're like, all right, time to get to the stand, we're gathering our stuff, we're in that tree by 2.30. And we knew we had a marginal wind that day. We did. Uh, and we knew we were taking a chance, but we kind of had patterned him good enough to where, we kind of knew what he was doing, but he came in on the, 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 the right trail, actually a little bit closer than the right trail. We're going probably after the biggest deer that I've ever had a chance to chase. Um, chasing it with Matt, I'm just filming, but Matt's got the bow. And, uh, this is a special deer, we, and uh, if we see him, it's gonna be a special moment. So we're going in, got some noise, it's nice and windy, so we were able to hang the stand, and now we're gonna be able to hunt him, so going in. So we get in at 2.30, and at 3.30, I'm just sitting there. I'm keeping my mind going. I'm on my phone. I knew this was going to happen. It was going to be a special day, a special hunt. And I'm trying to keep my mind off the deer. And I look over, 3.30, I look over, and here's Matt grabbing his bow. You know, I kept looking in that direction the whole time. It seemed like 90% of the time I'm looking because I knew that's where he was going to come from. And, of course, that 10% I'm not looking there is when he came in there. Frickin' nailed him, dude. Got him. Frickin' smoked him that second shot. Dude, I didn't even have time to turn the GoPro on. I just looked over. Go down, go down. Oh my god, he's down right there. Man. Oh my god. I know I'm saying that a lot. I can't help. I can't help myself. 
How do you feel? Oh, I'm feeling pretty good. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just tickled pink, man. I'm tickled pink, you know. To pick out a to pick out a target buck. I had to go back for work for a week, and he started daylighting every day, and uh, <laughs> it was driving me crazy. And I was like, I can't let a buck control my life. <laughs> and uh, I was just hoping and praying that he'd show back up and keep daylight when I got back. Yeah. Great hunt, exciting finish to it, that's for sure. <laughs> he that's just came hammer, out of, dude. he ghosted out of nowhere and 